Thank God for another Friday night. Yes, man. Right. right. We in church worshiping God, the beauty of holiness. Amen. Right. We thank God again for the privilege. Man. Right. Assembled. Man. We lift up His name that we can serve Him. Mm -hmm. I've said before, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. Yes. And an honor to serve God. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God that He set us apart. Yes. Do His will. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us to bear witness of this truth. Right. In this evil and wicked time that we are in. Yes. Maybe see the church. We ask Daughter Sarah to come up in the MC tonight. And uh, while she's on her way up, introduce the panel for tonight. Uh, I simply want to make mention about being dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes the journey may seem to be a lonely journey, which it is. But you also have to remember we are walking by the Spirit and not by sight. We are wrapped up in the Holy Ghost that no matter how the flesh may suffer, we have God within us and we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Yeah. And here where I'm going. When moments of loneliness come, you got to realize, as I said the other night, this is not necessarily a happy journey. Your happiness and your contentment comes in heaven. But you have a assurance, the old folks used to call it a blessed assurance, that God is with you. And no matter how you suffer, understand God is with you. And understand your lonely moments. Understand when you get depressed. He's still with you. The main thing you have to do is make sure you don't leave away from God. Right. And when incidents come up, for instance, say me and my brother had an opportunity to be saved. I stayed in the church and my brother left the church. I can't worry about my brother leaving the church because he had the same opportunity that I had. Even though, listen close now, even though I might miss my brother naturally, still and all, my brother made the decision and I had to make one too. Amen. So I chose to stay in the church and he chose to leave the church. Now when hard times comes his way, everybody wants all of a sudden to be saved when they ain't got no other place to turn. Yes. It's like the bank robber who robbed 99 banks. Mm -hmm. right. Stood before the judge and uh, the judge, I'm sorry for robbing them banks. But which one would you sorry for robbing? The first one? Yes. The second one? Or maybe you weren't sorry until you got caught. Oh, yes. now you're sorry. Yes. Because you got to go to jail. This is what I'm saying. Don't worry about people who made the wrong decision. Just make sure you don't follow after their example. Amen. Now, I hope someone can take this to heart. Because the soul you saved, that's your soul. Amen. You right. cannot save somebody else. I don't care how much you love them or whatever. And another thing, sometimes when people are in a position like that, they want to keep calling you or writing you or trying to reach out for you. They don't care two cents about you. Amen. If they do it, they would have stayed with you when they had an opportunity to stay with you yeah. and be united with you in the church. Yeah. What do they want to do? They want to have a place to get some quick money mm -hmm. yeah. when they get out of jail. Yeah. Yes. Hear me? Now when they get out, they got to have a crutch. Mm -hmm. So they're going to fall back on your sympathy. Mm -hmm. I say this, don't be no fool. Mm -hmm. I know you're right. 
Don't love nobody so much you're going to be a fool and leave the church for them. Because if you go that direction, sooner or later, they're going to pull you just like Solomon, pull you right up away from the church. And then you're going to look up one day and be in a position and you're going to say, what did I do? Yes. Well, you know what you did. Yes. You left away from the church. Yes. Like I said, don't be a fool. Amen. All right, we're going to have a panel tonight. We're going to have a good time with the panel. And we're going in some very, very deep water. Panel hold steadfast to your scripture text and bring your teaching from the Holy Ghost in concert with your scripture text. Uh, all right, Daughter Sarah. Praise Lord, Saints. Praise the Lord. 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 I want to thank God for our panel tonight. As Prophet for say that we are going into some very deep water. I want to go to our main text, starting in Acts chapter 20, verses 28 and 29. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Yes. And if we go over to our subtext in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8. For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. And turning over to our added text in Revelations chapter 17, verses 5 and 6. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And our lesson focus, we're focusing on the importance of understanding the Babylonian influences, customs, and traditions in the church today, and the importance of obedience to Bible instructions by studying the Word of God in right division. To my left, we have Evangelist Rogers, and to my right, we have Evangelist Smith. We're going to turn it over to Evangelist Rogers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Giving all glory, honor, and praises to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yes. truly the head of my life. Double up in an honor to God's true income, the pastor and prophet, Prophet H. Walker, to the blessed memory and legacy of First Select Lady Mother Walker. Giving honors to whom honors are due, greeting all the household of faith with love and admiration in Jesus' name. Uh, truly, it's a blessing to be here among the righteous under God's true and only righteous prophet of God in this last dispensation of time. He is God's final messenger and teaching the truth to God's remnant, Acts 238 Church. So I thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for uh, this being the ground and the pillar of the truth. Please, YouTube, get your, and any other viewers, get your Bible, King James Version Bible, your pad and pen, and follow along with these deep scriptures as we unfold the deep things of God uh, that He wants you to know, hallelujah, concerning. You know, this, this negative influence, this demonic influence, this Jezebel spirit influence that has come into the churches, has been allowed to come into the churches. It's not like it crept in or sneaked in. You know, it came in boldly and without any type of rebuke from the false preacher. But I just thank and praise God, you know, that we know the truth here. Uh, we know that wearing jewelry and makeup is a sin. It's an abomination unto God. It's you know, it's that Jezebel spirit. You know, although Jezebel has been dead and gone many years, her spirit is still alive and well in those that will take it upon themselves to follow after that spirit. You know, wearing makeup and jewelry, uh, lipsticks, r lipstick, red, fingernails, red, toenails, red, or, or any other color you want to choose, but so why do you do it? You know, you have to be taught correct guidance to know the history behind what you're doing. A lot of people run out there and they do something 
You know, that's why, you know, God says it's not in man to direct his own steps. It's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. Lean not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God never once commanded or, or told his people to put on makeup and jewelry. In fact, he said to take it off, to take it away. You know, but the th very things that God says not to do, people, the false preachers, want to have you do. Because they are living in sin. And they want you to live in sin with them. They care nothing about you and your soul's salvation. Yeah. All they care about is money, how they can get your dollar into their pocket, not your soul, into heavenly places forever. Pray my strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord, say. Praise the Lord. It's a good day. We get a land to live with. Amen. We got a chance to get saved. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to give honor to Jesus Christ. I have my life to my prophet Walker Lee. Let my mother walk. The ones who made the mother Smith. All the elders, ministers, teachers, evangelists, brothers, sisters, everyone in God's house. And let's give our panelists a hand already. We've had Charlotte and Friday. Thank God. We're we are breaking bread, as the Bible says, sharing the word of God. I thank God for the topic again because yes. so many people are just in, in uh, like they're blind. And uh, we're, we're here to, to open up your blinded eyes. You know, they, they're walking in darkness. They're walking in um, the way of Babylon, you know. <laughs> Babylon, Babylon the Great, you know, still alive and well today. Every time you put on makeup and jewelry and fancy hair do, you, you still keep in Babylon alive. But that's all the tradition of the world. That's all false worship, false religion. There's only one true God, and you've got to come to him. He doesn't accept any old kind of way. Even when Moses he told him to take off his shoes for he stands holy ground. So you can't come to God any kind of way. That's what God's point is trying to say. You can't just think you can serve God any kind of way. You can't. God tells us how to do it, and it's in the Bible. This Bible tells us how to worship him. And people need to take it more seriously, you know. God hates the proud look. That's so clear. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 17. When you put on the makeup and jury, all these things, you're showing pride. God dwells only in the midst of humility. These churches don't have humility. And until you do, you'll never receive the Holy Ghost because you're, you're, you're walking in your own thought. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, the Holy Ghost is going to teach you in all things. But you have to have his spirit to be able to hear from him. And, and you know, people would love to uh, say, but... Um, uh, it's like they always want to try to point out some flaw of this, but this and this and this, but I look better with this. And my arch eyebrows and, and the make and the, my uh, make, you know, they always want to say, but I look so much better. No, you look so much worse. I just really would like to say that to you, but you look worse. Actually, so many people I see with makeup, they look so much prettier and beautiful and healthier and happier without the makeup. Yeah. I've seen teachers, you know, sometimes with their makeup on and off, and I would say, oh, it looks so much better when you don't have that makeup on. But, uh, you know, all of this is all connected to the Christmas tree because when you decked up like this, you're just like a human Christmas tree walking all around, all decorated up. That's what you like. And God really brought this to my attention. That you don't want to do that. God don't want you to decorate your flesh. He wants you to decorate your soul and your spirit with patience and love and long suffering and faith. He wants you to decorate yourself with spiritual things, not that. So every time you think about this, uh, you go in front of the mirror and say, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a walking Christmas tree. And you, need, and, uh, yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Never right. calculate the pagan worship. And that's all that comes from. It's just really simple. You love the Lord. And if you know this Bible where he said, the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. This is God, the word. Do you not understand it? You can't separate. The word is God. He already told you that this is what I want from you. I want you to be meek. I, I want you to be meek. I want you to be humble. And what's so hard about that? If you love the Lord, then you, you, you don't want anything else. And it doesn't matter. That's what Proverbs trying to bring out. Don't let anybody draw you back out into that world for which God put you in. He's saved you. And he's giving some warning right now. Okay? And don't say I'm too weak. No, because you, you, even if you listen to Prophet almost like, just for one week, you learned a whole lot. I'm telling you, for one week of Prophet's teaching, probably equate to a year of anything, a false church, whatever trying to teach you. These children here know more about the true word of God than all these churches right up and down the street on Main Street. Amen. You know, because of prophet. And that's what we thank God for, prophet, because he has obeyed God's calling. Many are called, but few are chosen. They just don't want to accept God. But I'm telling you, you're never going to be happy without it. You're going to have to humble yourself and come out of these traditions of the world. Come out of this Christmas, come out of this Easter. But mainly we're talking about right in the spirit of Babylon. All this is out of the spirit of Babylon. But all this makeup and jury. And come as you are. You're beautiful as God made you. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 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 Thank Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And if we go down to verse 30, also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And we see that taking place right now in the false church. We see how, you know, they go to church and we see women all the time. They act like they can't leave the house to go to church without putting makeup on. They can't leave the house to go to church where you're not supposed to have, well, you're not supposed to have makeup and jewelry anyway, but especially in the house of God, people, they get dressed up on Sunday morning to, you know, they want to impress somebody. I guess they want to impress their other church member, but you need to try to impress Jesus because that's not, that's not the way to get to heaven. You're not supposed to be going to church to make it some sort of club or some, make it some sort of competition. You're going to church to save your soul, but people have gotten so far away Away from the Bible, people have gotten so far away from what God has commanded them that they think that going to church is some sort of social club. And we're trying to teach you about, you know, the spirit of Babylon. We're trying to teach you where these things come from, where this evilness comes from of women acting like they can't see themselves in the, the mirror themselves. Like you, you're afraid to look at yourself without having makeup on. That's okay. You've gone too far if you can't look at yourself in the mirror without having makeup on, or you don't want to go outside the house without having makeup on, or I can't, I can't be on camera without my earrings or this that and the other or I, I, I gotta make sure I gotta wear pants and you no know, if I can't wear a skirt or I don't want to look like an old lady no you've gone too far because right. you're saying that you don't want to look the way God wants you to look and that's the issue that we're trying to teach you is that you don't want to be like Jezebel you don't want to be like those people out there you want to be a woman of God you want to look like a woman of God and the way to look like a woman of God is to obey him and so we're going to teach you what it takes to be a woman of God we're going to teach you what it takes to not be like that Babylonian spirit to not be like Jezebel Isabel, to not look like everybody else because it's okay to look like God wants you to look. And I'll pass it over to Evangelist Rogers. Praise the Lord. And you know, if, uh, you know it, it says in Hosea uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 1, Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. Now, you know you all are out there suffering. You're not, you know, you're running to the doctors, making them super mega rich, and they can't do anything for you. That's why, but keep you in a cycle of spending your money, getting medications, spending your money, getting medications, asking any and everybody for prayer. Of The devil's children can't pray, get a prayer through to God. God does not hear a sinner's prayer. But if you will return to God, you know, he's, he's whipping you. Uh, he's torn you, but he will heal us. If you return to him in righteousness, if you return to him to do his will, he has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Why is everyone trying to live these false churches? Why are you trying to live in the devil's sight? You know, the devil is already uh, clearly saying God, God has already told us that everything that we do is open unto God. You know, everyone is open and naked unto Him. Darkness is as light to God. He can see through the darkness. You can't hide. You know, if you go to the highest heights, David said, He's there. If I go to the lowest low, He's there. Wherever you go, whatever you do, God sees you. Why are you letting a false preacher give you so-called confidence in sin? There is no confidence in sin. Though the numbers be great, though hand join in hand, it will not prosper. It is not of God. So I don't care what the numbers are. Look at, uh, look at history. Look at uh, the situation that happened in Germany. They had great numbers destroying people simply because they were not German. So although that entire nation was in the wrong, it didn't make them right. You know, so though uh, all the false preachers are in the wrong, it does not make them right. You know, if there's any lie in that church, and the lie is not obeying God's commandments. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 9, and I want to connect that with, uh, with verse 10 also, it's very important. So in, in 1 Timothy, it's giving you, God does have a dress code for all of you false preachers out there that don't want to adhere to it, don't want to teach your uh, club members uh, how to follow it. It says, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, not in jewelry, not in makeup, not in glitter, not in gold, not in all of that opulence, not in makeup, but in modest apparel. With shamefacedness, that means clean, free of decoration, 
free of trying to look like a clown or a prostitute, free of makeup, free of these artificial colors and things that you're putting on your face. You're not a, you're not a, a, a canvas. You know, God already made you the way he wants you to look. And when he created man, male and female, he said, it is good. So why are you trying to call God a liar by saying, no, God, it's not good. You know, let me add something to what you've already done. God made you different. He made some with freckles. Freckles are beautiful if you look at them. You know, they're so beautifully arrayed on many people. God made you different. He made you in a way that glorifies him. Why are you trying to destroy what glorifies God? If you're not glorifying God, you're glorifying the devil. And it says, and sobriety. Not with braided hair, that means braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. And this is the key. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So you're not profess if you're professing godliness, that means you're running around saying, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, blessed and highly favored. You've heard yourself say it many times, but look in the mirror. Who in the world are you? You are not a woman of God. You are not a man of God. You got men putting on makeup now, painting their fingernails. You go through the drive-thru and you see this hideous creature that's a male with long painted fingernails, makeup on. What an abomination. God didn't definitely didn't make you that way. So what in the world are you doing? You're following after Satan and these false preachers are not giving you any kind of inclination of who God is, what God is. You don't even know God's name. His name is Jesus. And Jesus is God. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is your Father. Jesus is your Savior. Jesus is the one who has given you these instructions, and you are not following after Jesus. You're not a disciple of Christ, nor are you saved, nor are you sanctified, and you're certainly not Holy Ghost filled, because the Holy Ghost will have you listening to the prophet of God, Prophet H. Walker, and following after the commandments of God to live a holy and sanctified life free from any artificial embellishments, and that includes that plastic that all of you uh, who know you know who you are are running and getting this injected, that injected, this sucked out, that sucked out, trying to make yourself look like a, a so-called Barbie doll. Barbie's not going to be in heaven either. Okay, so I turn it over. <laughs> Thank God for Ms. Ron's words and, and Shalva. And thank God for the word that's coming across to people watching YouTube. Uh, we just have a lot of people today going to churches which are not really churches of God. They're church of Satan, synagogues of Satan, as Revelation clearly states. Pastors are pimps and the women are prostitutes. Amen. And that's just the bottom line. So you don't want to go to that type of church. I wouldn't want to be associated with that. And a lot of times people don't understand how the people even got caught up with all this jury and worship a false god because they were disobedient and god allowed them to be sold into a bondage in egypt they learned the bad ways of babylon you know and and that, that's the problem the more sin you're in the more sin you get wrapped up in but, but from the very beginning it, and that's why i love how god put this is in genesis 35 when jacob he was building the altar he was building the first church he told him already, this is the very beginning, this is the book of Genesis. Now, people should take note in Genesis 35. And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar, referring to a church unto God, that appeared unto thee when thou didst fled from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you. He said, Put it away and be clean. You are not clean with makeup on. You are not clean with jewelry on. You're not clean with pants on if you're a woman. And change your garments. Change your way and get saved, okay? You're not saved yet till you take all that stuff off. Mm -hmm. And let us arise and go up to Bethel and I'll make there an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave Jacob all the strange gods with their, in their hand. They were obedient. You have to be obedient. God tells us, she brought out 1 Timothy 2 and 9, not with. And so clearly, can you follow an instruction? Because those are the only people that's going to go to heaven, those who can follow Bible instructions. Okay, Bible instructions. And also in uh, 1 Peter 3, 3 it, talk, it talks about who's adorning, let it not be. It didn't say be, it said not be. That means you can't do it. And be holy and be godly. These are some biggest little words and the biggest little word uh, we probably brought up to us a long time about if. 
if you continue in my word. See, a lot of people think just because I did repent, Lord, for something I did, I did get baptized in Jesus' name. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you have the Holy Ghost right now because he leaves you as soon as you do something that's against his word. If you don't repent, if you still got that makeup and jury on, you need to repent. You're not saved. I don't care how old you were when you get down. It don't matter now because God said, I'm not going to dwell in any unclean temple. Do you understand what it means? Some people think they got, they got false security. Oh, I got baptized in Jesus' name. But that's wonderful. That's the start. But you got to keep on going to the end. Pick up your cross to the finish line. You know, it's not like it's a one-shot deal. I'm saved. I, oh, I'm done. No, it's an everyday thing. Every single day, pick up your cross. Pick up your cross every day. Every single day. Almost sometimes you get down every single second. The devil buys you so hard sometimes on certain days. But you just keep your focus on Jesus and his, and his power. He's able to help you overcome. He said he'll keep those basically who want to be kept. If you don't want to be kept, he can't keep you. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go to verse 4 and, and, and Genesis 35. And they gave it to Jacob all the strange God which in their hand, all their earrings and which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which were at Shechem. So he hid them. So if you had something, that means I'm trying not to find it again. I don't want nobody to find it. I don't want my people to find these wicked customs, these wicked ways, these wicked traditions ever again. I want them to be stay lost forever. You're talking about some lost books. God wants the earrings, the makeup, and the jewelry to be lost forever. He don't want you to ever come back to that again. And if they did, it's because they fell in the ways of the heathen worship, and they went back. But God is a just God. Right now he's calling and tucking on somebody's heart and listening right now. Come on, just do it. Take one step of faith. And, you know, God will help you take two. Amen. 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 Thank God for the words that transpired. You know, we are, you know, breaking down this Babylonian spirit. And I want to go to Proverbs. And we go to the scripture often, but, you know, it never hurts to bring things out, you know, you know, we need repetition. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. And we've talked about what that means to have the attire of a harlot. And Prophet brought it out. You know, if you are a harlot, then you paint your face. You are considered a prostitute. You may even be considered a whore or, like the Bible says, a woman of irreproof. And if we go to uh, 2 Kings, I want to go to chapter 9 and go to verse 30. And when Ju Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face. And you know, we're showing the spirit of Jezebel. And you know, it's been said before, God absolutely hates the spirit of Jezebel, but it is taking over the church. The thing is, people are refusing to rebuke it, but we are rebuking it. And we're showing you why it needs to be rebuked because it's not of God. Evangelist brought out in Genesis 35, Jacob took away the earrings. Like she said, God hid them. Why would you want them back? Why would you want something back that God is trying to take away from you? If God is taking it away, Way, you don't want it back. That means that God doesn't want it for you. Like we brought out before, if God does, if God takes something away, who are you to give it back? Who are you to tell God, you know what, I want to wear these earrings today. I want to wear makeup today. If God said, no, don't do it. If God said you got to be modest, you can't wear gold, you can't wear pearls, you can't wear costly array, how dare you say, oh yeah, I can, and how dare these false preachers tell you that you can too? If God literally says in the Bible, don't do it. He brought Paul to say, don't do it. He brought Paul to say, hey, I need to tell these women because that gets out of here. I just tell these women, don't wear this, don't wear that. You know, it says in, in the Bible, it's very clear. We've said it before that the Bible is, you know, it's there. You know, it's there for you to read. It's not just there for it to sit on your dresser. It's there for you to read it and actually understand it and have profit interpreted to you. And that's what we're also trying to do. We're trying to explain it to you. We're showing you what a woman will look like if you don't have the spirit of Babylon, if you don't have the spirit of Jezebel. You won't have earrings in your ear. You have a veil on your head. Like it says in 1 Corinthians to you, you have a veil on your head because if you don't have a veil on your head, you're an abomination to God. It's very simple. It's very simple. You put a veil on your head. You wear it. Take off the makeup. You get baptized in Jesus' name. You obey God. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. It takes obedience. Do not follow these false preachers that are telling you it doesn't take all that. I promise you, it takes all that and then a little bit more. It takes that and two, so much more. Okay, don't listen to these people who are telling you that you can wear earrings, you can wear makeup, you can wear pants, you can do this, you can do that. You can celebrate Easter, which is coming up. You can celebrate Lent, which I guess is already happening now. You can celebrate Christmas. No, you can't do that because in the Bible, God told you not to. So how dare you say that I can if God said you can't? And let's pass it over to Evans Rogers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're not going to get these types of teachings out there in the false church. T.D. Jakes won't touch it. 
Joyce Myers won't touch it. Joel Osteen won't touch it. Why? You have to ask yourself, why? Just as they won't touch anything about sodomites and lesbians, the world calls homosexuals, trans freaks against nature, whom some of you call transgenders. No such thing. You cannot transitionalize something God has created. All you can do is mutilate that which God has created. So it doesn't exist. It's just a fallacy. People walking around with this painted up hair. You know, I look today at a woman who had a blue streak of hair. Someone else had purple. And it reminded me of a cartoon character. And sadly, people are trying to make themselves into cartoon characters. Uh, My Little Pony and, and all these others that you see with this strange colored hair. God put these colors on flowers. He did not put these colors in your hair. You know, so why in the world are you trying to make yourself an abject abomination unto God? You look like a freak against nature. You look like something that is out of a comic book. And why in the world would you want to look like that? You know, my goodness, they got comics for kids to entertain them. And some of those, sadly, don't need to be in place for even children. Yeah. You know, people are letting their children wear these decorated uh, clothes, these little princess gowns and these little uh, colorations in their hair. Oh, isn't she cute? No, she's an abomination. He's an abomination unto God. Why are you painting little boys' fingernails? This is a boy. Why are you painting little girls' fingernails? I remember when I was a child, they have these kits. They come with the dolls, or you can buy the little makeup kits to try and make the child look like that doll. It's crazy. And you're causing that child to have anorexia, to have body dysmorphic disorder when they get older. You're causing that child to have bulimia. You're causing all kinds of things in these children when you stray away from the commandments of God. What's wrong with training up a child in the way that it should go? And when it is old, it will not depart. What's the matter with training up a child in a way to respect and, and admire God, to fear God, to fear you as a parent? They don't respect you if you're causing that child to follow after Satan. Satan has no love for you or your child. Why do you think so many children are dying? You know, even, even to the craziness of mothers committing a, a first degree premeditated murder by killing, murdering that little baby in the womb. You thought about it, and you decided to go ahead and do it. You murdered a baby, an innocent life that God said he will not hold you guiltless if you do harm, if you slay the innocent. What's more innocent than a little baby? It can't do anything. It can't do anything to defend itself. It can't even cry in a way that you can hear it. They're crying in the womb, but you can't hear it. But you should be able to hear it because that's a part of you that you are murdering without God's permission. And I won't be, uh, be too much longer, but I wanted to touch on Ezekiel, uh, this history of why women are, and men now, hallelujah, are putting on makeup and jewelry and doing everything against God. And in Ezekiel chapter 23, it says, in, starting at verse 14, and that she increased her whoredoms, oh, there's that word again, whoredoms, for when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, if you don't know, that's red. It's in the red family. Girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their head. That's wigs. Why are all of you wearing these wigs? I don't understand it. God gave many of you beautiful hair. He gave you beautiful hair. Why are you covering it up with a wig? Why are you trying to change it up? You're not happy with your own body. You're not happy with your own self. You're not happy with the way God made you. You have to try and, and, and wear, and most women that wear wigs, they don't have just one. You know, I know someone, glory to God, that has a, probably a closet full of wigs. You have to change your appearance uh, two, three, four times a week. What's wrong with you? You do not love yourself. You haven't been taught how to love yourself. You've been taught how to love Satan and what Satan wants you to look like, what Satan wants you to do. And all these false preachers and false friends patting you on your back, telling you it looks good. No, it looks hideous. Someone needs to tell you the truth. Take it off. You look like a clown. Ronald McDonald. You look like Bozo. Oopsie. Hallelujah. These clowns are not even on TV anymore. You, you're going to take their place? Amen. You know, the circus is not in town. Why are you trying to look like a clown? You know, and then you get mad if somebody laughs at you. Well, you're presenting yourself as a clown. Why look like a prostitute if you're not a prostitute or if you think you're not a prostitute? 
Why in the world would you rob a bank and then say, I'm not a robber? What you do is what you are. As a man thinketh, so he is. As a man presents himself, so he is. A man or a woman, how you act is what you are. Why put on the character of Satan and think you're going to go to heaven in the end of the day? Put on Christ. Put on holiness. Then you'll see God's face in peace. Pray much from the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise God, Father. Wonderful words from Vintage Brian Spinachello. And I want to take you to right now Ecclesiastes uh, chapter, uh, there's going to be chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, people, you need to, uh, you know, catch hold of yourself. Our whole duty is, is to God, not to ourselves. Amen. And that's what we live for is Jesus. He's supposed to be anyway. A lot of you don't. You live unto yourself. You make yourself your own God. Y'all make these so-called entertainers, you know, your idol. Amen. And you cannot do that. God said, fear God. Okay? Fear God. Okay? You rush out, try to buy tickets, you know, almost get trampled on when you're there in these little concerts you go to. What are they doing so much for you? How they can, how could they could be, ever could fulfill you more than God's word can and God's presence, the presence of God? You'll never be satisfied in life till you come to Jesus. You are cursed right now. And God is very angry with you people. You are cursed because you're not doing his will. And his will is following this word. And I want to go to Luke right now, Luke 11 right now, 11 and 28. Uh, it's, uh, you know, God tells it basically like this. If you love him, you're going, to, you're going to keep his commandments. And if you don't keep his commandments, you don't love him. And that's it. That's very simple. See, God is so simple. And he even wrote it in the Bible. That's why I love Jesus. He said the simplicity that's in Christ is in the Bible. He's telling you he's simple already. <laughs> God's so complicated. You know why? Because sin makes things complicated. If, if you're obedient, it's so much easier. But he said, and yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word and what? Keep it. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep God's word deep down in us every single day. I don't care who come against you. I know what the word says. And, and so do our children. They know what the word is. They, they can set up and witness and testify to these people out here. Yes. And there have been times. My daughters have come to me and told me, you know, I was able to touch a person. I said, well, good. God will give you more opportunities to witness to people. Keep letting your light shine, you know, because they see the light of the Lord, you know. And with the word, it comes great responsibility, okay? You can't take it lightly. That's what Prophet keeps saying there. We are special people above all people keep trying to tell you. We are a very small a number of people out here that are really following God 100%. So we got to be that light everywhere we go, you know, on the job, in the home, if, at the marketplace, or wherever. We have to know that we are truly sent by God. We are God's special remnant people. And we have to get out there and try to tell people more and more. Don't be afraid to talk to people. you got to witness to them. And the best form of witness is you. <laughs> Everywhere you go, when they see you, that's the greatest witness because the Bible says, let us be living epistles. When they see your life, it will say more than any words, really, you could say, but you do need to speak God's word. But when they see you living it, then it may, that will draw them in more, you know, when they see you really living the word of God. They see you without the makeup and the jury have a good, holy continence, you know. Godliness, Bible says, godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, they'll see we're not chasing after money all the time. Oh, I got to go get this car, go get this new outfit that we're just happy being holy, coming to church. Paying our tithes and witness to other people about, come on in, come on to be happy, come to church, pay your tithes and be happy with that, you know, because this world has nothing to offer you but a bunch of misery. And when you put on all this makeup and jewelry and stuff like that, you're attracting the wrong people, you know that, right? Oh, huh? you're, you're attracting a whole bunch of proof that you don't want to deal with. And then you be wearing all the short little mini skirts and tight foreign fitting stuff on your chest and everything. You wonder what people will cost you. Well, that's your problem. Come on. But it really is your problem. But it's their problem too. But it's your problem first. Because you don't have to come out of the house looking at like that first. Then they wouldn't be looking at you second. Hallelujah. Because you put it on first. Amen. But I'm not taking away from the responsibility for the other, but you did it first. Amen. So you're more responsible. Cover yourself up, please. Amen. Then we, we cut out a lot of problems. You know, cut out a lot of problems. You know, I got so much pedophilia. And, and I know we all talk about sodomized lesbians. We got, you know, we got incest still going on. People don't talk about all this stuff. All this stuff still going on to this day. Yes. Everything from the beginning of time. That's what God said. There's nothing new under the sun. 
<laughs> they just keep going around and around and around. But we should be so thankful to God that God sent his prophet with his word, his mouthpiece, his, his spokesperson, his ambassador. Because you're not going to get this anywhere, anywhere, everywhere. It's going to be a little bit here, a little bit there. What? Only here that you find the whole Bible and it comes together and makes sense, you know. Then you can really come and get some rest for your soul. You know, so I pray that these words are by you well. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Praise Lord. I thank God for everything that has transpired so far. And just really quickly, I want to go to Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. The rudiments of the world also refers to makeup and jewelry and the Jezebel spirit. And that is what Paul has tried to warn the people of. And that's what we're also warning the people of because other people don't speak up about it. But in true life, we're going to speak up about it. We talk about the things that other people don't necessarily want to talk about because they're too scared or they're cowards or they're scared that they're going to lose their whole congregation. You can't be scared to preach the word of God. You can't be scared to stand up and tell women that you have to dress a certain way. You can't have this. You can't wear this you can't be scared to tell men that you can't do this you can't do that you gotta you gotta have the spirit of christ and the spirit of christ is not going to be a coward the spirit of christ is not going to allow you to be fearful of what other people think about you or what other people say about you but we're rebuking the spirit of jezebel we're rebuking the spirit of babylon because it's not of god that's the bottom line it's not of god okay that's what you need to understand is if you're if you're sitting right now and you have makeup on your face or you have earrings in your ear you need to go wipe that makeup off you need to go take those earrings off your ear and understand that it is not of God. God does not want that for you. God wants better for you. That's why you're watching this video right now because God has something to tell you and God wants you to know that there are people out there, there are women especially out there who dress the way that God intended them for them to dress. There are people out there who will teach you the way that God intended you for you to be. The point, the point is that you have to be obedient. If you are willing to stand on the word of God, if you are willing to obey the word of God, then you will make it into heaven. The other things, you know, they will come if you choose to obey, if you choose to obey first, that's the first part. If you obey in God, then you will take that makeup off. If you obey in God, then you will take those earrings off. If you obey in God, then you will put that veil on your head. You will throw away those pants. You will throw away those high heels. You will, you know, you will wear a skirt. You will wear a dress. And you won't care about what people think about you. You will care about what God thinks about you. Because that's what matters at the end of the day. Trying to get into heaven. Stop worrying about what people think. Stop worrying about how other people look. Worry about how you look in the sight of God. And perfection to the Lord. Tonight, they preached their heart out, like I oh, said, yes. and you know, it's a blessing because I was uh, doing some training on a, real quick, and it comes ties in right with the word tonight. And it's an older man from Philadelphia, so he came, moved here from Philly because of the uh, pandemic, 60 plus. So I had to do some training, and he looked at me, he said, looked up and down, he said, uh, You don't dress like. Uh, other women here, uh, you know, he just looked, he said, uh, what church you go to? Because you don't dress like the ones here. And I said, I told him, true life, Pentecost church. He said, I was raised up that way, you know. <laughs> it was a blessing because he looked, you know, he said, all the people that work there. So we are different, amen. Thank amen. God. We are not made up. Uh, I just said, the band was plastic here and uh -huh. uh, like I went to the store I saw the blue hair too and the pink and you know all that thank God we're not but there's a difference there is a difference I want to stop and it made me feel so good I said true light with a big smile <laughs> true light with a tall shirt you don't dress like this here no we are not like this here but thank God amen that we're not like we used to be. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for our prophet. Amen. Teaching us to be holy women. Amen. I'm not the women of the world or the women of the night. But I'm going to close in Revelation 17 <laughs> and 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. 
I saw a woman drunk with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs, martyrs, excuse me, of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So that's the word of God, amen. The fornication, what people are doing, that is the customs, the Christmas, the Easter, the makeup, the jury, the East, uh, Halloween, all of it. Amen. But thank God that we know the truth and we are not one of them women that are they speaking about the painted up face, yes. the jeweled up women, and the summarizes, prostitute, whore, and what do you say? <laughs> all of above. Amen. 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 But I thank God for the word that, you know, that, that uh, elder man, that way he looked, and it was with the word. You ain't like these other women. Where are you from? Amen. You won't dress like these other women. And it, it, it makes you feel good because we oh, stick yeah. out at work, you know. Amen. And when you're at school, young ladies and women, young girls and teenagers, and you see the girls going to the bathroom with their makeup, you yep. love who you are. God gave Amen. you who you are. Amen. Thank God. And you got to be blessed. As the man just said, or the man just said, not uh, trying to be a Barbie doll and this and that. Right. Thank God for what you are and be happy what you are and do what you can do what you got. That's being God, being beautiful. And you know, and taking care of yourself. That's beautiful of it all. God Amen. give you what you get and say thank you, Jesus, for my beauty of Amen. holiness. Amen. Don't need no makeup. Don't try to even think about lipstick and fake uh hair and all that. And I have a young lady, like Vanja said, she comes in. She says she does hair. She come in with braids. Mm. The next thing, it has a bun up her head. Yep. Next thing is something else. And my mm. supervisor look at each other because she has a wig for every day. Yep. And we just, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Who are you today, Sybil or what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll just say, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, the abomination. And pray my strength in the Lord. <laughs> Great time on a night. Thank you, praise God, for our great prophet, yeah. Prophet Bishop Ed Walker. Thank you, Lord, for the love of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the family. Once again, let's get a panel of Pastor Dan. Thank you, Lord. And the lesson focus was the importance yes. of understanding the Babylonian court influences, customs, and traditions in the church today. And that's why um, God told his people to be a separated people. He told them, when I bring you out to the land, learn not to do the um, customs of the heathens. You know, that's why God brought the Hebrew people out of Egypt, you know, mm -hmm. because God wanted his people separated. He wanted them to know to live holy and learn holy things. <laughs> and it goes on to read importance of obedience. And then like the Bible mentioned, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. That's the whole thing. If you're not going to be obedient to the word of God, then you're being disobedient. <laughs> How are you going to be obedient and disobedient at the same time? <laughs> it's about Bible instructions and studying the word of God in right divisions. And I believe in 1 Timothy, it mentions about study to show thyself, uh, study to show thyself approval, workman unto God, needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The word has to be properly interpreted. Amen. That's simple as that. That's what the word of God is for. It's just like you have a map and it tell you how to get to Florida and tell you got to go south, but you going uh north. Man. You would never make it there. Amen. So how are you going if the Bible is the road map to heaven, how are you gonna get to heaven if you don't follow the word of God? <laughs> if you not gonna get there. You know? And the Bible mentions that it must be a difference between that which is clean and unclean. A saved woman should, uh, her character should never reflect a prostitute. Amen. Bible talks about old things are past away, you know, all things become new. Amen. Yes. So when you yes. wasn't saved, you looked like a prostitute or harlot. But when you get saved, that's 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 gone. Amen. <laughs> oh, you that's dead. Amen. Amen. Old lifestyle is supposed to be dead. Amen. And it's the 
the, uh, the, the terrible part about it, they want to bring this in the church. Mm. And I, I'm going to close just like when Ezekiel, the Lord say, you know, about pointing to the inner court of the church, and I'm going to show you great abominations. Mm -hmm. And you go right into the false church, and all these women looking like harlots, looking like prostitutes, mm -hmm. right in the church. You in church looking like a prostitute with the character of a prostitute. You know, you look like, like they say, you look like a duck, quack like a duck is a duck. Hallelujah. So you paint your face, put your earrings on, makeup, lipstick, then you're a prostitute. Amen. That's simple as that. before me and I would like to go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 and it states wherefore come out among them and be ye separate said the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you a lot of women like today there are um, there are a lot of lukewarm Christians out there and they always give excuses to like to wear makeup and jewelry but it clearly states in Genesis 35 to 35 2 through 5 paraphrasing when Jacob took all the earrings which were out of the ears and he hit them mm -hmm. and if he hit them that was a reason because God did not want right. that for his holy women, his daughters of Zion right. and then people would say oh that's the Old Testament so then it clearly states in First Peter 3 and 3 it states who's adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel and so it clearly states right there in the, in the New Testament you can't uh, wear jewelry or makeup, and yes. in the end, the uh, Bible wins again. Yes. So I want to thank God for, for all the preachers in the panel and arise and be dismissed. Amen. May the Lord watch. May the Lord watch. Between me and D. Between me and D. While we're absent. While we're absent. One from another. One from another. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.